this is kind of one of my favorite um, components that we get to cover um, because I see so many athletes focusing on supplements instead of really kind of maintaining a healthy diet. And I think today there are hundreds of options of things that we could be taking and any one study that someone does, they're quick to produce something. And I think there really are some key supplements that will be helpful and beneficial for you. So I'm trying to kind of weed through all of the noise and break it down into some that are just the essential important ones that I think you guys should focus on. Outside of that, if you know you have vitamin and mineral deficiencies, if you know you have other health issues, then some of those other ones can come in. But these are really broken down into sections of the things that you've gotten, I think, that you need and will be most beneficial. Um, as you can see, we had, did part one was more performance-based. These are all health-based. So we're going to look at some supplements that help with sleep, uh, help with gut health, brain health, and then kind of an other category, which um, is kind of vitamins and minerals, and then some other, a couple other really beneficial supplements um, that I kind of make sure that my athletes and Scott's athletes are taking. Again, uh, to remind you guys, this is really, really important when you're choosing a supplement to make sure that you are getting a quality supplement, that it's informed sport or NSA certified, that it's from a reputable company that tests their ingredients, that uses um, high quality ingredients, and that really is upfront about the research that they're doing, um, that they're not including things in their products like proprietary blends. That's always a kind of a red flag in my book. Um, because you really don't know, especially in the United States, what you're getting. And I think it's really easy to jump in and say, you know, oh, this is this is great for this and I'll, I'll take this and what could it hurt? It really, there could be detrimental effects. So the benefits, improving health, improving body composition, addressing a deficiency, those are all important things and reasons you should look into taking a supplement. The drawbacks though are it could contain dangerous substances. It doesn't, the bottle doesn't actually, your powder doesn't contain what you think it is. And in many, many cases, it might not actually work. So um, BCAAs are something that, you know, has gone through kind of the swing of essential for training uh, to it doesn't actually work to you may or may not need it. Uh, and we're kind of at that stage now with those that uh, the research shows that there really isn't, if your diet is, is well-rounded and you're consuming enough protein, there isn't a lot of uh, benefit of BCAAs. So if you're, you know, in this case, spending countless amounts of money to supplement with something that isn't uh, necessary, your money could be spent better elsewhere. So don't jump on the supplement bandwagon train just because and always be mindful of the supplements that you're going to choose. All right. Category number one is sleep health. Now, I think as athletes, we all know the importance of sleep. It helps with recovery. It helps with mental focus. It helps uh, with hormonal status and maintaining a hormonal balance. Um, that's when a lot of our bodies do repair and some of us are great at getting it on our, on our own. Others need uh, supplements to help. And it might you might not need them all the time. It could be when work is stressful, when life is stressful, when training is very hard, if you're traveling a lot. So I, I'm not saying that a sleep supplement is essential every day. But if you're struggling with your sleep, that is going to impact your training. And you should make, you know, find a supplement that works for you that you can incorporate into your, into your different cycles of training. I love to recommend a sleep supplement to my athletes in the few, like four to six weeks leading up to their big race for many reasons. One, that's when training is increased and so their bodies need that extra sleep. It's when you're starting to stress about your race so you might not be getting the quality of sleep that you were before, especially if you're gonna be traveling to a race Sleep is important to help with immunity. It's important to help uh, make sure that you're arriving at your race ready and healthy 
And a lot of us don't sleep well when we travel or sleep well in a hotel. So I think if you're looking at a sleep supplement, if your sleep is great the rest of the time, I think that a lot of athletes would benefit, most athletes would benefit taking it in that heavy training block cycle um, so that you're better prepared to train and better prepared to go race. Now, if you do have issues with sleep, um, it, there are safe sleep supplements out there and there's definitely a way to incorporate them into your routine, uh, making sure that you're choosing the right thing. So what do we look for in a sleep supplement? I like to say the ingredients that are included. So we all have, I know we've heard of melatonin, valerian root, B6, um, things like chamomile, tart cherry powder, tart cherry juice, uh, rhodiola. So those are kind of proven ingredients that we know help with sleep. Don't jump on that bandwagon of the latest, you know, um, Gosh, I can't even think of what someone's touting lately. Uh, well, I guess CBD, and there's mixed reviews on that. Um, and again, if you're actually getting the amount of CBD that you need, but relying on ingredients that have research behind them. Uh, the extract amount, so that you're actually getting efficacious amounts of an ingredient in there. And that's for, you know, valerian root, 200 or so uh, micrograms. Uh, uh, Tart cherry, you're looking at something like three to 400 micrograms. Um, the combination of all of the ingredients, again, together, uh, I always think it's a dangerous sign when a pill bottle recommends that you take you know, six to seven pills. I think if you can't get it in two, maybe three, you're probably not using the most efficacious ingredients or the most high quality ingredients. So making sure that those extract amounts are actually giving you what you need. And then again, extract type and quality. And this is where something like B6, for example, you want to make sure that it's the active form, not the inactive form. And if companies aren't labeling these products and really giving you the specific, I know True is a great your sleep uh, product, it does a great job of telling you this is the exact type of chamomile we're using. This is the exact type of rhodiola we're, we're using. Same with uh, Momentous Sleep. They'll show you the valerian root type, uh, the tart cherry type. So not just a listing of ingredients, but actually the either plant-based name for them or the type of ingredient so that you know you're getting um, the right amount. Uh, dangers of getting addicted to sleep pills, for the most part, any of the ones that we're recommending, Thorn, True, Momentous, uh, the chance of getting uh, dependent on or addicted to those sleep products is very, very low. Uh, it's where you start dosing with high, con high doses of melatonin or uh, maybe some over-the-counter sleep aids that those kinds of things could be more of an issue. Uh, I'm often asked when discussed when discussing sleep if something like um, oh what's the cold equivalent Nyquil if that you know if you're just having a bad night of sleep if something over the counter like a Nyquil sleep aid uh, is is fine and I say better to you like save the Nyquil if you're actually again see your physician first I'm not a doctor uh, save that for if you're actually sick and look at some of these products that have more of the natural extracts and natural ingredients to help your body with that rhythm and flow and more helpful sleep. Sorry. Um, all right, I think that kind of covers what to look for sleep-wise and what you do and don't need. Um, I guess before we move on, any questions specifically on sleep? Does anyone take any of these sleep supplements currently? Just out of curiosity, you can raise your hand. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, great. We've got great sleepers. And yeah, uh, yeah potentially, it's, I have zero problem sleeping. I could fall asleep anywhere, but I do like to use a sleep uh, in, in like heavier training blocks. I notice a difference in how quickly I recover and kind of the quality of my sleep. Which one do you use personally, Elizabeth? I like the momentous. The, uh, the momentous one. Yeah. Okay. Um, it's a nice blend. Good to know. <laughs> All right. The gut health. So this is an area that absolutely positively um, 
is well researched, founded in uh, you know exercise as wonderful as it is, definitely impairs immune function. That's just part of the effect of it. Uh, it keeps us healthy, but it also your body's defenses go up in order to repair. So we need to make sure that we're taking care of our gut health. The in general, there's been a big I would say the last maybe five to six years, kind of a trend in the microbiome and the importance of gut health. And we're learning outside of sport just how crucial it actually is for overall health and longevity. So everything from depression to heart health to like dental health uh, is affected by your gut, your gut health, how you're digesting vitamins and minerals and nutrients, um, plus immunity. 70% of your immunity is located in your gut. If you want to be a healthy athlete, a healthy human being, it's very important to make sure to take, take your gut health into consideration. Now, when you're looking at how to choose a gut health supplement, prebiotics are very important. Those help feed those probiotics. So looking for something that has a prebiotic in it is important. The type of bacteria, so lactobacillus, uh, and the, again, I'm going to be horrible about, just know that a BIFA, B-I-F-I strain is what you're looking for, um, and multiple types of those strains in your probiotic. Those are the two that have been studied um, most heavily and most beneficially for athletes, specifically. Looking for the content, so the amount of the bacteria in your supplement, 25 billion CFU is kind of that minimum marker. And a lot of probiotics will tout 500, 1,000 even. And there's a kind of law of diminishing returns. And it's not that you're, that there that many strains of probiotics or that amount is gonna be detrimental, but it's if, are those strains actually effective? So you don't need high, high, high amounts unless you know, you've been on an antibiotic or unless you've been traveling or sick or something like that. Uh, 25 billion CFU is plenty and a good, a good dosage to look for. Um, targeted release is another one that is beneficial. So they found that a lot of the bacteria can be destroyed at different parts of digestion. So you wanna make sure that there's a targeted release uh, either a capsule or a formula, or that those bacteria can withstand the stomach acid in order for you to be able to digest it properly and keep that in the gut and actually aid in gut health. And refrigeration is something that I like to remind athletes. They've really shown that the quality of probiotic isn't negatively affected whether you research it or whether you refrigerate it or not. Um, so don't think that you're getting a better quality because it has to be kept cold, that it's in a more living form. There's plenty in the old days that kind of was the case before we knew a lot about probiotics, but we've, we, I have no part in this, scientists have developed that, uh, capsules and a way to have them with a targeted, the probiotics targeted release. So it gets through the stomach acid and actually makes it its way to your gut, um, and I find that uh, supplements that don't require refrigeration are just that much more convenient to take. Um, and there's plenty of examples here, the clean, the sound probiotic, the true gut health <clears throat> that don't require refrigeration. And that way you can travel with them, you can take them to work with you. Um, you don't have to necessarily worry about being tied to your refrigerator as, you, as we used to have to be when taking probiotics. Um, you can get probiotics in your, in your daily diet. However, most people don't consume enough. So foods that contain probiotics, yogurt, kefir, uh, any kind of fermented food like a kraut or a kimchi, um, nasty one is natto. It's like fermented soybeans, tastes awful, but, uh, can help with gut health if you're, if that's something you're really looking at. However, we, you know, Kimchi, for example, is excellent, but it's really high in sodium. So we to consume enough that would actually bene be beneficial for our health every day, we might be at risk for consuming higher or dangerous amounts of sodium. Yogurt, same way. A lot of people will choose a yogurt. Uh, many of them are sweetened. So then you could be consuming more sugar, carbohydrates than you're intending. 
Um, and again, the quality of yogurt kind of depends on the probiotics that you're actually getting. So incorporating them in your diet is important, but making sure that you have a supplement that you like as well uh, can actually help with that. And I like to tell athletes that, again, um, leading up in your hard training blocks, especially you want to be consuming those probiotics, but they did a study that showed in athletes four to six weeks before your A race uh, supplementing. So another good time to start a probiotic supplement if you're not taking it all the time is in that lead up to your A race. All right, uh, how many, any raise of hands who takes a probiotic regularly? Elliot, there you go. <laughs> Especially, I think this is a season too, Christina, nice. Um, as immunity wise and looking to make sure that you're staying healthy throughout the holidays and the winter season, a probiotic is just a smart an insurance policy, if you will, but also smart for gut health overall. So definitely something to consider in the winter months. Was well, that a curiosity? Um, mm -hmm. You mentioned the two strains that were beneficial for athletes did they provide why those specifically and why for athletes versus like normal population so uh i think af again i don't know i don't recall exactly why these two were specific but i know that um like they compared it to a study of patient of surgical patients who were undergoing treatment uh um Again, I don't remember specifically what they were about, but they their guts responded better to a different strain of probiotic. And so then that sparked them to start looking at. And Sound Probiotics has done a lot of research. I know if you go to their website, they have a ton on why. I think they even have it broken down into like four different lactobacillus specific strains that they like and why those are um, beneficial. Awesome, thanks. Sure. Any other Maybe. questions on probiotics or gut health? All right. Brain health, this is a big one. I've had a lot of questions on athletes. I think um, Joe Rogan and some of them uh, really kind of changed the game in terms of getting people to think that they needed a brain. I think his was like alpha brain. Um, and it really has sparked a movement for the better, I would say, on the importance of brain health, not only for work productivity and flow, but also for sport performance. So brain health doesn't just involve being able to concentrate on a task. It helps with agility. It helps with reaction time. It helps with, um, for triathletes specifically, like mental focus and clarity on those as you're, you know, in longer races like Ironman, for example, uh, brain health, and that helps delay fatigue, uh, mental, mental fatigue, which helps you stay in the race longer, make better decisions. So incorporating some kind of brain health supplement, if you will, if not every day, definitely again, during race season or during harder training blocks. I like to I don't actually use a brain supplement every day. I do, however, um, take turmeric, which we'll get to, which is very beneficial for your brain every day. Uh, specifically though, brain supplements, I like these again for harder sessions. So if I know that I'm going to be, you know, a zone three, four, very specific race pace set or, you know, mile repeats or a track set, track a uh, session where I know reaction time is important and speed is important, I will utilize a brain supplement. Uh, same again at work or uh, any time that performance mental or otherwise is, is important. We have a couple of examples here. I know Scott loves the true uh, spark and the momentous brain drive. Thorne has one also. Again, all of these NSF certified. Um, when you're looking at what to look for in a brain health supplement, ingredients is number one. And that's, are all of the ingredients listed? And the reason that I say that is because brain supplements are notorious for containing either small amounts of amphetamines, 
they're, uh, they'll be added with fillers. So like high doses of caffeine. So different types of stimulants affect your brain in different ways. And caffeine is one that gives you that kind of immediate energy boost. And some is good, but a lot can be dangerous. And so if someone's making a brain supplement product, caffeine is cheap uh, or cheaper than some ingredients. So if that's the bulk of that product, that's a dangerous sign or a red flag. They're not necessarily looking at overall brain health or helping to maintain focus specifically. They're looking to give you that that boost, which people associate with, with brain supplements and development. Uh, you want to look for other ingredients that will uh, be vitamins specifically to help make sure that you're ins ensuring, you know, uh, like green tea leaf extract, ginseng, some of those uh, ingredients are better. So brain supplements, look at the ingredient list, make sure that you know what ingredients are included and it's from a reputable company. So you're not getting a dangerous dose of something that you wouldn't otherwise. And again, if they don't list the amounts of the ingredients, that's something to be wary of. Uh, the dosage, I like suppl brain supplements that offer, instead of just one pill, that either break them down into two or three pills as the suggested serving size. And the reason for that is, is so that you can decide, you have a little more um, ownership over how much you're taking. Uh, one, I know both, uh, true and momentous are two uh, two pill serving size, and that allows you to either take it in half. Uh, so just doing one if it's for you know a workflow session, or taking two if it's for some kind of heavy training, or if you know you can try one pill and see how that affects your body, and then if you don't feel the effects, go with two or vice versa. Two is too many. It just allows more flexibility because. It, people respond differently to brain supplements. And it's something that you want to be mindful of and be available or have those options so you can tailor it to what fits you best. Uh, and then encapsulated is another, this is another one that's important, that time release uh, so that you're actually utilizing it when your body wants. Uh, most now have this encapsulated formula so they can tell you this will start taking effect within 20 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes. And if you're looking for focus, obviously that's important. You don't want it to hit too early or too late. Um, I have seen and recommended for some athletes doing more of the like ultra distance running that a brain supplement can be helpful, uh, especially if you're going into those overnight hours or you're going on hour 12, 13, 15, I think a brain supplement, I've seen uh, that help, help a lot. So again, another consideration and another outside use, I guess, of a brain, a brain supplement that's really helpful for athletes. Has anyone ever taken one? Had a good experience, bad experience? No? All right. Well, in a way, that makes me proud. I like it that you guys aren't relying on fads or different types of things but hopefully these will be some new ways that you can incorporate some things into your training uh christina yes so these these supplements um actually work by i mean my, in my mind supplements have always worked like i have to take them for a long time for to, for it to like actually work or see a difference or what have you. That's how in my mind supplements yes. work. So I'm very, you know, this is very strange to me that it's like, oh, I'll take it the day before a workout or so they work this way is, is my question is they do actually work this way. Yes, that's an excellent question. Thank you for bringing that up. So vitamin and mineral supplements take time to actually chain, make changes in, in your body and your blood, things like iron, vitamin D, those kinds of things, you won't see the results of those right away. And they do require consistent, consistently taking them in order to make sure that your body's absorbing them and utilizing them. The sleep supplement, brain supplement, specifically both of those, you will feel the effects immediately. They're whole food 
or plant extract ingredients that will that are immediately absorbed and utilized by the body. Okay. So great question, great difference in order to specify that yes, you can take them day Fair before, enough. day of picking and choosing when you take them um, because we aren't looking for, you know, again, long-term results. Uh, this is an, an immediate cause and effect. It, think of them as if you were taking, you know, a, a, gosh, a medica a, like a headache medication yeah. or something, I, I guess. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Great question. Really great question. Uh, Sure, Elliot. So before you leave the brain um, mm -hmm. group, so what are the actual ingredients that are typically in those? For those of us that aren't taking a brain specific, like I've never taken a brain thing, but you mentioned turmeric, I take that. Yes, so I love turmeric and I will spend some extensive time on turmeric. Uh, specifically just because it has so many, uh, so many benefits. Um, but when you're looking at a brain supplement, some of the like things that are definitely, it, what you're looking to do with a brain supplement is kind of stimulate those neurotransmitters, okay? Uh, awaken those, I guess, cells, if you will, and, and have them active. Now, in, I know in Momentus's specific, specifically you've got um l tyrosine acetyl l cardamine um cit gosh, citrium cit sodium a different kind of sodium um a whole pl uh, plant extract uh called bacopa that's really been beneficial uh yerba mate is in some green tea is in some b, b vitamins b12 uh specifically niacin is a big one um vitamin b6 so did i list those off too quickly niacin b6 b12 uh acetyl l-cardinine l-citrulline l-tyrosine and then the whole food um yerba mate green tea leaf extract uh even ashwagandha in some has shown to help with rhodiola has shown to help. So those are the, I guess, key components of ingredients. All right, to the other category. So the big ones that I have in this category would be vitamin D, fish oil, and turmeric. Um, and again, we can talk, uh, I'll talk a little more specifically, like some plant-based athlete ones, some female athlete ones that might be beneficial or studies have shown. But in general, I would say that these three are ones to take, I take them daily. I recommend, again, before taking any supplement, vitamin and mineral supplement, you should have your blood tested, see what's going on so you know. Uh, however, They've done studies, and they show that up to 80% of athletes um, are low in vitamin D, up to 90% of the general population is low in vitamin D. So it's fairly safe to assume, but again, I don't like assuming, so get your blood tested. I am one of those chronically low in vitamin D. I have to supplement, even though I live in a state like California where I'm outside 80% of the year. Um, so, Vitamin D, fish oil, and turmeric. Now, when you're looking at vitamin D, um, it's a it's a vitamin, but really acts more like a steroid hormone in the body. In that uh, you you don't your body like we need to get it either from the sun or from food. And when it comes in, so it comes in, your liver turns it into. 25 hydroxy it's a when you look at your blood work that's the type that you're looking to have them tested uh, and then your kidneys take it from that and transform it into a more usable form and that's how it gets circulated throughout your body uh, a lot of us think that we because we exercise outside that we are getting ample amounts of vitamin d 
when in fact we are not. And a, a kind of funny test, I had a professor say this once. He said, uh, if your shadow is, gosh, what was it? If your shadow is shorter than you are, then you're not getting enough vitamin D. And if there's no shadow at all, when you're outside, you're definitely not getting enough vitamin D. So when you're outside running in the sun or biking in the sun, it's kind of a, you can kind of do a test and like look down and be like, okay, yeah, I'm definitely not getting the amount of sun that I need in order to be uh, making vitamin, having my body make vitamin D on its own. If you live in, you know, at certain parts of the equator, you know, below, I don't remember the exact longitude and latitude, uh, most of the year you're not getting the, the enough amount of vitamin D. We use things like sunscreen and clothing, you know, that blocks vitamin D absorption. So even athletes, main point being, even athletes that exercise outside pretty regularly can be vitamin D deficient. Um, things, and it's also hard to find in foods. It's not, uh, as readily available as some of the other nutrients. Uh, you know, a can of sardines with bones in it is probably my favorite way to make sure that you're getting some in food. Um, again, uh, bone broth, bone marrow, those kinds of things. Uh, why is vitamin D important? First reaction people think is just for bone health, which obviously crucial for athletes. Uh, vitamin D is required for calcium uh, fortification and, and their body's ability to maintain bone health requires calcium. So they work in tandem. You want to make sure that you're getting enough vitamin D. If you're an athlete that's ever suffered from multiple breaks, stress fractures, those kinds of things, absolutely get your vitamin levels checked. Something to be mindful of. Um, but it's not just bone health. So vitamin D is really important in muscle tissue and muscle recovery. As athletes, if you know we're asking so much of our body, we want to make sure that we are properly maintaining vitamin D levels so that we can properly build muscle, rebuild the muscle that we're breaking down. Um, it's also really important in cardiac health. If you think about it, that our heart, that's one big muscle. And they've done studies that show that athletes that aren't performing as well, athletes that are having issues with their heart, uh, they're low in vitamin D. So our sport, very heart dependent. Want to make sure if you, that you're taking care of yourself and taking care of your heart. Uh, I put in here, you know, what to look for vitamin D supplement, vitamin D3 that also has vitamin K2 and K7. That is your winning combination if you will. Uh, Momentus makes a great one. Um, Thorn makes a great one. 5,000 to 10,000 IU a day if you have been shown to have a deficiency. Um, if And it's one of those that you can, again, working in tandem with either Scott or myself, showing us your blood work. Four to six weeks of that 10,000 IU should raise that back up and then you can go to drop to a lower daily level in order to maintain. But it's something you want to be in contact either with your physician or one of us to make sure that um, that you're actually getting your body enough so that it uh, so that you're repairing and maintaining those levels. That soluble vitamin, so you want to make sure that you're consuming it with food. Um, a lot of people take their supplements, and with, this is probably a question for another day, uh, either away from food or they take them with coffee or, you know, whatever they're eating or drinking in the morning. And some are great to take with food and some are great to take on an empty stomach. Um, caffeine can uh, decrease absorption of certain vitamins and minerals. So vitamin D, though, is one of those that you take with food. Um, all right, fish oil. There are probably a million different types of fish oil. I would recommend generally those of us in the US like to stay away from some of the fish oil supplements you get at like Costco and the big, the big $20 for a 90 day supply. In this case, you pay, you get what you pay for 
basically. Um, you want that EPA DHA ratio of one to one. That's been shown to be the best. You want uh, the kind of fish oil that you uh, that you choose is important. So the type of omega three that you're choosing. Uh, you want to make sure, like, so the omega-3, the triglyceride-bound omega-3 is the best kind to get. That's most easily absorbed by the body. It helps if there's a digestive enzyme uh, to help. Fish oil can be di hard to digest sometimes. That's why a lot of people get those fish burps. So if a pill has a digestive enzyme in it, you're less likely to get those, more likely to be absorbing it. Uh, and you, ideally you want that fish oil to be distilled, meaning that they've removed the heavy metals and pesticides. Uh, so those are all something to, to look for there. And turmeric, uh, the magical, the magical, wonderful, I say like secret sauce for all athletes, uh, reduces inflammation, expedites recovery, improves joint mobility and functioning. And then it's also amazing for longevity. So helping with brain health, preventing Alzheimer's, they've done multiple studies that show helps with blood gluco uh, glucose metabolism, helps with uh, heart health. It's, I think it's kind of a winner. I, not just for athletes, anyone that I know, I try to encourage to take turmeric. Um, and when you're looking for that, uh, that turmeric, you're looking for the, Mariva curcumin, that's the best kind. And about a thousand milligrams or so a day is, is enough. Unless you know, I have athletes that, uh, you know, have a history of Alzheimer's in their family. So some of them are take 2000 a day, but a thousand units is, is kind of the baseline therapeutic efficacious dose that you're gonna wanna look for. Elizabeth, is that something and you would recommend taking all the time or is that just like you know during heavier training loads it's, it's one that i recommend taking all the time strictly because it has so many other benefits um and there's products you know if you have a turmeric powder uh that you you know i've done the turmeric lattes before bed uh that's a way to get it it just doesn't have to be in pill form turmeric is a root so you can grind it up, put it in a smoothie, you can put it in soups or stews. Um, the spice turmeric, if you're using that in large amounts, again, making sure that it's actually a quality uh, spice. I mean, I wouldn't rely or depend on the turmeric powder that you get from Costco to, to be, you know, a efficacious dose and high quality. That being said, there are plenty of, of you know, natural food stores that have great uh, turmeric powders to add to food and, and whatnot. So if you can get a combination, if you know you eat it a lot in your diet or include it a lot in your diet, then maybe every other day or maybe during high training. But there are so many other benefits outside of training that I think it's a great idea. Okay. And for fish oil, I meant to ask, what's the recommended dose and what are the benefits for fish oil? Oh, uh, fish oil, heart health, brain health. Those would be the two, I would say, biggest overall overarching and then lowering inflammation is the other. Uh, it, they've done different studies that show that it helps with energy metabolism, that it helps with uh, glucose, uh, maintaining glucose levels um, and preventing type two diabetes. Again, not always a concern with endurance athletes, but definitely something that I've seen. Uh, They've shown that, it, again, cardiovascular health and brain health would be the two biggest benefits. Uh, training wise, I think the, the, the part that comes in the most is a lot of athletes don't consume fish. And so they're missing out on um, those omega-3 benefits. You can get omega-3s from things like chia seeds, flax seeds. Um, a different kind of sea algae they have you know you can find it in those but getting enough of those uh on a daily basis hemp seeds another great source um in general though if you're not getting that you know four servings three to four servings of fish a week 
um, probably best to get a quality supplement. And again, if you're eating fish two days a week, taking a fish supplement three days a week, you're, you're in, in good shape. If you are a plant-based athlete and you don't eat fish, definitely something to be including in your diet on a regular basis. And I think the, along with that plant-based component, uh, something that other athletes, plant-based athletes would want to consider a B vitamin supplement and an iron supplement. Those are two that I would add to the essential list. Again, if you've had your blood work tested and you know, and you're not eating a diet rich in animal products, you're probably low on those things. So something to consider that I would add into the, the other essential health supplements. Uh, yes, Elliot. So as a longtime vegetarian, how's flaxseed oil versus fish oil? Good question. Uh, flaxseed oil is excellent. I don't remember off the top of my head the EPA to DHA ratio. So I would have to look that up to make sure um, that you're not. We want to be really careful with the omega-369 um components and I honestly don't remember what the ratios of those are so I would look um but flax oil itself I know has benefits aside from brain health I know it's they've shown it helps with skin health it helps with digestion um so it's definitely a a healthy component to include in your diet on a regular basis for sure I'll look it up for you though and add it to the add it to the info after All right. Any other question, Elizabeth, like yeah. globally, you know, I feel like personally I have so many supplements that I'm taking now and it seems like there's always new supplements that are coming up that are, Oh, you know, there's new research that it's helpful to take this. If you were to break it down into maybe three categories, like top priority, medium, you know, probably important, or as you said, you, you highlighted certain ones to use during training and then ones that are like nice to have. Do you have a, would you be able to give us like sort of a quick, oh, you know, sure. Putting you on the spot here but with those three different categories. Yeah. Um, always blood dependent. So this change, like what your priorities are, are probably different than mine. Um, just because of, you know, male, female, stage of life, uh, medical history. So of those aside, in general, I would say that essential ones for the group here, uh, things to take every day, I would say vitamin D, turmeric, creatine. I'm debating on adding a probiotic to that list. Uh, I'll throw, I'll, throw, hey, I'll throw it in. It's my list. I can have four things in there. Why not? <laughs> so yeah, I would say uh, that would be essential. And fish oil, I'm not putting in because I hope that all of our athletes are getting three servings of fish a week at least. And um, if I was trying to conceive or pregnant, I would put fish oil in that mandatory list for baby brain health, for sure. Um, so again, this is where some of those things come up uh, that it's like, oh, this would be essential if this was important to me. I would include B6 in the, or B vitamin complex in essential if I was a plant-based athlete. And I would include iron if you tested low for iron, uh, which a lot of female athletes do. Uh, then in the like, Probably a good idea worth spending the money on, I would say. And again, this goes back to some of our other ones from presentation one, a protein supplement worth spending the money on included. Every, I know I have it in my day, every day, at least once. Uh, fish oil then for sure. Uh, probiotic, if it's, if it's not in the first group, it's definitely in this group. Um, and then I would count the 
Yes, if you were an aging or a frequently injured athlete, I'd even put collagen in there. Um, that's been found to be very beneficial uh, for athletes for sure. So yeah, that would be my, oh, and I guess back to performance, an electrolyte supplement I would, can, I would put in the mandatory category. So that one's up there in the top as well. And then the nice to have or to use as needed would be a sleep supplement, a brain supplement. Um, gosh, collagen could be in that if, if you needed it specifically for injury recovery. Um, magnesium is a nice one uh, that I would say could be athlete dependent, could be uh, dependent on stage of life or, or training status. Uh, and then some kind of, um, I would put as a maybe like an ashwagandha, some kind of hormonal support supplement, adrenal health, especially for endurance athletes would be nice to have and potentially even in that middle category of uh, needed during heavy training cycles. Uh, so yeah, there's, there's my on the spot, uh, on the spot list. Yes, Christina. In the adrenal health category, uh, which supplement in particular would you recommend? Like which, which brand or which, which, which one? Sure. Uh, ashwagandha is definitely my favorite. And I think the most researched, um, as a, as a single product, if you will. Uh, reishi mushroom powder is another one. Uh, I personally take that at night as like a stress stress reliever, help with uh, hormonal health. Rhodiola is a good one, but if you're only gonna do a single supplement, ashwagandha would be the most impactful. Okay. I know a company like Gaia Herbs, they have yeah. an adrenal adrenal support and that has three, I think it has ashwagandha, rhodiola, and something else in it. Perfect. Um, okay. So yeah, that's a good one for sure. Uh, Jordan, hi. Hey, sorry, my cat's <laughs> crying here. So if you hear, um, I was actually, you just answered the question because um, having some kind of, a, a lot of the adrenal support supplements actually cover like ashwagandha and rhodiola. So I personally take, I think it's called Adrenavive and it, um, mm. It's a, a brand that my doctor, um, who you may know, Kiki Silva, um, she recommends, um, and it's a high quality supplement too. So I think for me, it's overwhelming to have like so many different things. So potentially if there is a, uh, like the B stress complex is really good for like getting like, the range of B supplements or like Adrenavive gets multiple of those kind of adrenal support systems that are super helpful for women. So, yeah. Oh, that's great. I'm so glad. I knew that I knew Kiki had said, uh, had recommended one. I couldn't remember which, uh, which one I'll, we'll have to put that. Yeah. In the I mean, I, Adrenavive is super expensive. There is another, um, Adreset is also a, a, a one in, that has the same, I don't know if they have exactly the same ingredients, but it's a little, um, more inexpensive. Um, but yeah, Adrenavive is her favorite one. Okay. Which again, maybe worthwhile to take if you're suffering from some hormonal issues and you don't have to take it forever, it can help. Uh, yeah, so worth the money to pay and get that taken care of and then do something else right. like the. And yeah, and I think on the, th it maybe is the B stress complex, is that Thorn? Maybe Thorn. Yeah, 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 that's, it's, a, that's great. Yeah, that's a great one. Good point too, and be enable in combining them. I think. Scott made a point that true protein um, has some prebiotics and probiotics in it and digestive enzymes. So in a way you're get, again, how much you're getting, uh, you have to look at the label, but finding products that contain ingredients like that are important to give you, you know, more bang for your buck, higher return on investment, less things to take for sure. Yeah. Thanks. Great. So we have a few minutes left. We'll open it up for questions. I know we've been asking questions along the way, but I we recently had Christina, Chris, who joined the program. Um, so if you have any 
initial questions you, you want to ask about the program, feel free to do so here. Um, and then Candy, I know it's been a, several weeks now, so everything going well so far? Yeah, I mean, I have my days, you know. <laughs> but um, yeah, I've, I've been meeting my goals in terms of, um, you know, how much weight I wanted to lose. And I feel great every day. Um, and I just feel like I can eat so much. Like I never feel like I'm starving and there's always one more snack I can have. And I love all the true products, the pancakes, the bars. So I'm a happy camper right now and uh, I'm doing well in my workouts. So it's going really Great. well. That's awesome. That. Any questions on supplements I didn't cover or ones that you've heard? Like, does this actually work? This, now's, now's the chance. Throw some, throw some out there. Why not? Yeah, you ready? Yeah, okay. Quercetin. Okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll give you a list. Quercetin? Um, or quercetin, however it's no. pronounced. Uh, no. Moderate study. Uh, I, I wouldn't count it as essential. Okay. Uh, let's see. MSN? No. Okay. Uh, CoQ10? Potentially, uh, if you're on, if you have low bone density or you've had heart issues, uh, uh, case specific, I would say. And again, the quality matters a great deal. A okay. Great deal. Those are just other ones that have come, I've come across yeah. over time. Yeah. So, okay, good. Thanks. I get a lot of questions about CBD. That's probably a different, another day entirely. Uh, mixed, mixed research, mixed reviews, a lot of variation in quality of products. Um, at the moment, they kind of, if you feel it's working for you, it could be the placebo effect, could be a real effect. Uh, and you have a product that you like, I'm not gonna say to stop taking it, um, but I don't know that I would say start taking it, uh, just because it's the, the trendy ingredient at the moment that you can find. I think I even saw it in like water the other day. It was like eight, uh, CBD infused water for $8 a can or something, which gets me because the amount of CBD that was actually in there wasn't even enough to like be a therapeutic or efficacious dose. So. Be careful what you're same with collagen. I see that all the time. It drives me crazy. Um, the kind of collagen you get matters, uh, the, how it's combined, when it's consumed. So those little collagen packets that like, or a collagen add in, you know, collagen latte or whatever, you're not getting enough and it's probably not a high quality. So save your money, save your money in general. Whenever you see like at a, uh, some kind of add-in, like a protein add-in in a smoothie or a collagen add-in in a latte or in some kind of product. And it's most of the time not worth your money. You're better spending the money on the actual supplement and adding it yourself. There's my ending statement on that. <laughs> Great. Well, thanks very much, Elizabeth, for your presentation. And thank you, everyone, for joining. We'll be sending out the recording. And if you have any topics you're interested in, for our upcoming sessions, please do email us. We're always looking for kind of new topics that our athletes are most interested in. So thank you very much. And we'll talk to everyone soon. Have a great Thanksgiving for everyone here in the US. All right. Thanks guys. Have thank you. Thank you. Bye.